Hey, hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Gofa Nilungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Find us on Instagram and Facebook as Funny and Jesse. Say hi, we'll say hi back. Check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, um, subscribe, and enjoy the content that we put out. So today, I'm actually going to be reacting to um, Ami did that answer. Why? Quote Paul and Peter instead of Jesus. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Sorry, but I just would like to justify one thing. Um, you didn't say that he reheated more epistles or wrote more epistles, but I put it down here. You said grace, the teaching of grace is Pauline, not from the others. That's what you said. Is it correct? So, and I think you know, that is, according to scripture, not correct. Because in 1 Peter, we read very clearly that Peter writes here in 1 Peter 1 verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into the living hope um, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, etc. Here very clearly in this whole passage, and I would like to encourage all the whole audience to read the letters of Peter, who was one of the closest of Jesus' followers, as well as the letters of John. And very clearly, if you take the time tonight, very clearly you will find that grace is expounded there. Grace comes through Jesus Christ by faith which you put into it. It's not just holy. Just this, just, is, this is the trouble. You see, I said any time we have a, a conflict, with our Christian brethren is either Paul, 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 now Peter. I want to know what does Jesus say? You see, this is the problem is, I said, look, Jesus says, I am talking about your Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, you listening, brother, you can't be listening while you're turning the pages, please. The human mind can't do two things at the same time. Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There's no heaven for you, unless you are better than the Jew. And how can you be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments? So now you say the law is nailed to the cross. I ask you, are you circumcised? You say, no. I'm talking about the generality of Christendom. Maybe for constriction or some other reason, sickness, you might have been circumcised. But as religiously, are you circumcised? I'm asking you, are you circumcised? I, I don't think you know, I have to answer this question. Right, you. No, the thing is, you are not circumcised. <laughs> the Christian says he is not circumcised so because he is not bound by the law. He is not bound by the law. I say, where did you get that? So, he's going to quote Corinthians and Philippians and Galatians no. and Peter and James. I say, what does your Jesus say? Jesus says, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So can't you see, we are at loggerheads because I am following Jesus, the master. Whatever the master says, we say we agree, we accept. Because the master was teaching nothing other than Islam, keep the laws and the commandments, believe in God. And this is what he told a Jew very beautifully. A learned man of the Jew comes to Jesus. And he says, good master, what good thing must I do to gain eternal life for Jannah, heaven? What must I do? So Jesus says, why callest thou me good? There is none good except one, that is God. He doesn't deserve to be called even good according to him. There is only one good, that is God. But, but, are you listening brother? But, if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. Salvation comes by keeping the laws and the commandments. He says, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. I want to know whether you are following him. Are you? Yes. You are. You eat the pig? You eat pigs? Yes. Right. Did Jesus eat the pig? No. no. He destroyed 2,000 pigs. But the Christian them, they are all pig eaters now. And you say you are following him. Jesus was circumcised. Was he? You follow him? Are you circumcised? He says, no. You say you're following him. You see, you are accepting words with words. Mr. Didier, I, th I think we split hairs here. 
Jesus made wine. Do you drink wine? Jesus drank wine. Did you do you drink wine? There was no law. Let's the, be fair. Let's be fair. We don't split. No, no, you you Look, you are to follow him. Mr. Didat, I think we must be fair here. And I think time is running out. Time have, is running no, out. You have very got a very good point when you say here, for I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds or surpasses that of the Pharisees, who were the most religious and the most sort of people? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, who those who keep the Lord to the dot, no one else. Like Mr. Didat, he is the most perfect Muslim perhaps in the country. But Jesus says, if you surpass your righteousness, you must surpass the righteousness. Where, how can you surpass the righteousness? The young man you quoted now, he said, keep the law. He said, the young man said, but I'm perfect. I'm like the Pharisees, I have kept everything. What did Jesus say? There is something in your heart which is not right. That's your wealth. And he said, sell this wealth and then, and come and follow me. That is to follow Jesus. How to become more than the Pharisees? How to be? How to become righteous? To follow Jesus. Thank you. Thank he you. he explained to the Christians, his followers, how to be better than the Jew. He just didn't leave it in the air, making beautiful statements. He said, when you fast, now his disciples, the Christians, if they are his followers, when you fast, do not fast as the hypocrites do. How you can be better than the Jew? The Jew was fasting, he was praying, he was giving charity, he was straight jacketing his life, but you are supposed to be better than that. Which way? Jesus explains. He said, when you fast, do not fast as the hypocrites do. They do not wash their faces and they don't brush their hair. Who the Jews? To be seen of men. In other words, with muck in their eyes, I think you better tell this young man to sit down, please. Yes, please. Just tell him to sit down. We had enough of him already. Yeah. With muck in their eyes, you know, gloomy feeling. He said, what's wrong, uncle? So I said, I'm fasting. See, it leaves that impression that Mr. Didat is a very pious religious man. Out of season and in season, he's fasting. So he says, no, no, no. You, when you fast, you must wash your face and brush your hair of a happy countenance. Nobody knows that you're fasting because you're fasting for the love of God. So you can be better than the Jew. By doing that, but on a higher level. The Jews, when they committed adultery, they were guilty. You, my followers, Jesus says, if the thought goes through your mind, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. So no beauty contest for you, no long leg contest for you. This is what he means, better than the Jew. You keep the laws, but on a higher level. When you give charity, the Jews made a big noise. See, you know, so-and-so, his wife was in hospital, childbirth, and he couldn't bail her out. I had to help him with 250 rands. I tell the whole world, you know, I helped him. I helped her brother, 250 rands I gave. So I'm boosting my ego at his expense. So Jesus says, no. When you give what your left hand gives, your right hand mustn't know. Can you see? So he's explaining to you every step how you can be better than the Jew. Not by not keeping the laws and the commandments. But by keeping the laws and the commandments on a higher spiritual level. Which the Christian is only accepting words by words. He says, you accept, you follow him? He says, I follow him. I say, which way are you following him? You don't look like him. You don't behave like him. You, your diet is not like his. In everything, he's just the opposite of what you have been doing. If he comes along in his second coming, I'm telling our Christian brethren, in the free state, and if they recognize him, what are they going to do with him? Take him home and a pig on the spit. They're going to praise it for him. He's going to vomit. Can you see? So in other words, look, he will be most uncomfortable with you, but if he comes to my house, any Muslim home, you know, my wife will be like his mother. My children will be like his brothers and sisters, if he had them. He'll be more at home with me hygienically, he'll be more like with me than with that, our Mr. Cunningham and the pot, you remember? You see, Jesus will be wanting that can, can of water. You, won't, you haven't got it? Look, he'll be more at home with us than with you. It is we who are following his teachings, not the Christians. Because you quoted again Peter, you quote Paul and Paul and Paul. I said, what did Jesus say? Please, for goodness sake, why didn't you tell me this is what Jesus said? Jesus said, the work is finished, 
and the work is finished. Ah, what an, an interesting video. Mm, to Christians, specifically Christians, um, why is it not in, in fact let me just generalize this not just christians why is it that we are fine with um wanting to seem sound so righteous when we know we're not following what god wants us to do it can be christians it can be muslims it can be atheists it can be whatever it is that you believe in why is it that we're very very fine to want to seem so righteous and yet we're not so in this situation jesus has clearly stated that follow the laws and then follow the uh, the commandments if you're a true christian i don't think it should be that hard but then jesus didn't drink why are you drinking jesus doesn't eat pork why do you eat pork do you understand does everything have to be written to you in in a language that children can understand too for you to actually say yes it's actually clear here that this is the situation although um despite whatever you follow i feel like none of us will be perfect at the end of the day whether it's christianity i won't be righteous from the time i joined christianity to the day i die no we're all going to make mistakes we're going to commit certain things in life that are going to be bad and we're going to face um the punishment for that but uh like i said we're human we're going to error sometimes and depending on what we believe in and what we believe happens after we ask for forgiveness that's all up to us but it would be very very um nice to actually have someone say you know what i actually practice this religion according to this book and i feel like at least i'm 90 percent sure i practice it the way this book wants me to practice it or i practice it 95 percent of the way this book describes it you know and it would be something worth listening to i don't know what you guys think what are your thoughts about what that had to say and the questions that was and the question that was initially asked if there's anything you want me to react to drop the name or the link down below and i'll react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.